baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. 16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6.3-6. 6, 3 -6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord and give him thanks. Oh, let's love him together right now. Thank you, Jesus. How many are excited about what you feel in this house right now? Jesus is in the house. Hey, yes. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Amen. It's Wednesday night and I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Now, now hold on, hold on. Surely you heard the devil say that you can't have church on Wednesday night. You know, you've worked all day long. You've had a tough time. You probably fought through traffic to get here, so... The devil just tells you to just take it easy and just kind of, kind of, kind of, you know, let the guy next to you kind of. But how many don't care what the devil's talking about tonight? I, I came to give God a little praise. And... Hey, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all better be careful because if y'all keep on doing that right there, something's going to break loose. You might mess your hair up. You, you might have to loosen your tie a little bit. You might have to. Y'all keep that kind of stuff up. Hey, glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God, praise God. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. What a beautiful spirit. What a beautiful atmosphere of praise and worship is in this house. Amen. I can feel the faith. I can feel the expectation. How many believe God is going and is doing great things here in Fairfield? Praise God, praise God, praise God. I feel like since I've come in, there's been some devils that ran out of here. Ah, oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Amen. I give honor to Pastor Golden and his wife, and their precious family. And uh, it's an honor to be here. I've been able to minister here one time, I think, previously. Had a great time then. And this family, this leadership, and this church is in our prayers. You are making a difference. You are making a difference in the city of Fairfield. And there's great things on the horizon. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And it's great to have my friend, Pastor Miles Young, here uh, in service with me. And I was delighted when he said that he was able to come with me. Uh, if you've got men like this around you, something good is getting ready to happen. Amen. I hope you came ready to, to give the devil a hard time tonight. Anybody make up in your mind who's going to give the devil a hard time? He's been giving it to me all week long. I might as well make it rough on him in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Amen. So I give honor to this congregation as well. And the revival that is here is so exciting. And I hear great reports and I can see what God is doing. And the best is yet to come. Amen. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. If you have a Bible, I'll invite you to open it tonight. We'll turn to the word of the Lord. Um, I'm reading tonight from the book of James chapter 2. James chapter 2. How, how, how long has it been, Brother Golden, uh, since you guys came to Fairfield? Five years. Aren't you glad for a man of God? When sometimes when when you're in a place and and you experience a thing and if you haven't seen other places around the country, then you might, it's kind of human nature sometimes to kind of get settled a little bit. But I travel the country, I travel the world, and I, I'm in a lot of different churches. And I am here to tell you that what you have in this sanctuary tonight is something to hang on to. It's something to, it's something to treasure, it's something to value. Amen. And I made up my mind a long time ago. I, I don't want to be one of those who looks back on the good old days and doesn't live in right now. And if a church can ever come to grips with the fact that they are in the good old days right now, don't wait 20 years to look back and say, boy, don't you remember when we did that? Don't you remember how it was in that building over there? Because you're going to have to look back. This building's not going to hold on to what y'all are doing. I, there's, there's bigger stuff that God's going to do. Amen. But, but if you make up in your mind, I'm going to praise him right now. I'm going to rejoice in it right now. These are the days. This is the time. It's, I'm not going to wait 20 years before I, I say God did something great. God's doing something great right now. He's doing it right now. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And if a person can realize it, grab a hold of it, take advantage of it, rejoice in it. Amen. Yeah. Powerful things take place. James chapter 2 and verse 16. If you have it, say amen. Let's back up. Let's back up to verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? And then the question, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, destitute of daily food, one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. I will show thee my faith by, everybody say by, by, by my works. Thou believest there's one God, thou doest well. Devils also believe and tremble. Wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. I want to take a few moments tonight, and I want to just preach to you. A message I have entitled, Abraham Believed God. Abraham Believed God. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated in the house of God. <clears throat> I, 
I think that it, it's good to start out by saying that there is faith in this house tonight. There is. Um, you can feel, you can feel faith here. And that's a big deal because the Bible said in the Old Testament that the just shall live by his faith. Um, I want to talk a little bit, a bit about faith tonight because I want to. For one, I want, to, I want to talk about biblical faith. I want to share with you biblical faith. And secondly, uh, and I'll just be forthright, I'm tired of the religious world, the denominal world, defining faith for us. Because what we're doing here tonight is not a denominational thing. Amen. It's not a religious thing. I, I heard a survey the other day that said that America, United States of America, is less religious than it's ever been. And to some people, that's, a, uh, um, that's something to cause concern. And I, I can see where some might get concerned by that. But the same poll also said that they are every bit, if not more, spiritual than they've ever been. That's not bad news to me. What it tells me is that Americans are finally seeing through the facade. They're finally figuring out what apostolics have always known. That the game of religion and the game of denomination, the, the gig is almost up. You can only lie to people so long. And you can only sell people an easy believism for so long. Eventually, you have to produce the goods. And the reality is false doctrine cannot produce an authentic work of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Janice and Jane Breeze withstood Moses and they said, we know what's going on. And Moses said, no. We know what's going on. And there was a competition there in front of Pharaoh. Hallelujah. And, and who's going to believe who? And who's going who's gonna to trust in who? And Moses just kept on doing what he was doing. Janice and Jane Breeze kept on duplicating and using the magic, the magicians of Egypt. But eventually, the magic tricks run out. Eventually, the con game runs out. The truth is that religion cannot produce a godly life. It cannot produce a redeemed person. And on the world stage, we are watching the world tear apart religion as they get beaten at their own game. But not the apostolic church. The apostolic church is what it has always been. Amen. We are Jesus' name. We are Holy Ghost filled. Hallelujah. And eventually Moses wins. Eventually Moses overcomes the games. Eventually Simon the sorcerer is put to, put to flight. Amen. Real faith wins. I want to talk about that real faith. Um, because some of you have run into this. I know you have. I have run into this. There is a message out there that, that says something to the effect of all you have to do to go to heaven is believe. And, 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 and that, can, that can intimidate people. That can scare people. Because the Bible does say that, that if you believe, you shall be saved. It does say that. And people hone in on that verse and they'll, they'll look at you and they'll, they'll, they'll say, well, it's John 3, 16, that God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I believe John 3, 16 with all my heart. 
But it's a lot more than just a denominal cliche. It's a lot more than just a catchphrase that we use. I, when someone grabs a hold of that verse, I'll tell them, yes, amen. Praise God. You got to believe on God. But back up a little bit, 11 verses, where it tells you that except a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Faith is more than confidence. Amen. Faith is not a pep talk that you give yourself. You don't psych yourself up to have faith. Like maybe if you squint your eyes hard enough and you muster up the faith vibes. Maybe if somebody's sick, maybe you can walk over there and you can you can grit your teeth and squint your eyes and just faith, 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 faith in Jesus' name. And somehow that, that experience can somehow make that person get healed. Amen. Faith is not confidence. Confidence is something that you feel about yourself, something that, that you feel confident you can do a thing. It's a faith in yourself. It's a self-faith. Um, some of God's greatest champions didn't have much confidence in themselves. Here is where we see Gideon, who, who is threshing uh, wheat in the wine press. He didn't have a lot of confidence in himself. And Abraham is heading up Mount Moriah, and he's going to sacrifice his son. Uh, he didn't have uh, a lot of good feelings. He wasn't feeling fuzzy and positive at that moment. Every paternal instinct inside of him was saying, I'd rather be anywhere than right here. Moses says, I'm not good enough. I'm not eloquent enough. I'm not able. I don't have the tools. I don't have the ability. God used every single one of them because faith is not about confidence. Faith is about belief in the word of God. Hallelujah. You don't have to have confidence in you. You've got to have confidence in God. How many know God is able tonight? Well, that's about half of us. How about the rest of you? How many believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think? And you might feel like it's your last day, but God is still able. And you might feel like you're losing everything, but God is still able. So I am not going to allow the religious world to define faith because what they've done is they've drug it down from what it really is. And they have said, it's basically a mental, a mental exercise. Just believe in God. Like you could go, Oh, okay. I believe that's it. Just like that. It's a lot more than that. Can I take my time to talk about this? Hey Amen. I, I want to run the aisles and I want to, I want to hang from these fixtures with you too, but I, I want to give some information at the same time. Amen. Um, it's the kind of thing that caused Martin Luther. Martin Luther did not like the book of James. Didn't like it. He tried to take scissors and cut it out. When they came to choose the scriptures and, and determine which one is canon, which one is authentic, which one was really written by the apostles, he said, not that one. We don't want that one. And the reason he didn't want that one is because um, it interfered with his idea of what faith was. Coming from the Catholic background that he had that was works heavy, works of men, you got to realize Paul taught that we are not justified by works. How many, how many have ever read it? Romans 4, it's in there. We're not work justified by works. And there's people that will say that. No, we're not justified by works. We're justified by faith. And what they're saying is you don't have to do anything. All you got to do is squint your eyes real hard and say, I believe. 
problem with that is every, I turned the pages and I can't find it anywhere in that Bible where people did that. And if you begin to read what, what Paul says in Romans, Paul is not talking to a bunch of United States citizens who have been indoctrinated with religion and denomination. Paul is speaking to Hebrews. And these are people who have been under the law. And if you read it closely, he's not talking against works. He's talking against works of the law. Big difference. Because the way people frame it today and define it today, what they're saying is you don't have to do anything. I had a man come to me one time and he said, he said you, you shouldn't tell people they need to get baptized. I said, really? He said, no. He said, and as a matter of fact, you shouldn't tell them they need the Holy Ghost. I said, well, I shouldn't. Wow. He said, no, you shouldn't. He said, and, 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 and I'll tell you what, God will save them according to the knowledge they have. And I said, well, brother, let me help you out then. We need to stop all the missionaries from going to any of those countries because God forbid they should ever hear the message of Jesus Christ. If they're going to go to heaven like they are, man, leave them alone. Why would we ever want to corrupt them with the gospel? Let's stop sending preachers. Let's stop sending missionaries. You think that's what God's trying to say? No, sir. No, ma'am. That's not what God's saying. We're going to preach this gospel of Jesus Christ, and we're going to preach it the way the Bible declares it. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And it's not time to stop preaching. It's time to start preaching. And it's time to believe. And it's time to put our action. Amen. I want to talk about it tonight. Because... When, when the Bible says that Abraham believed God, it means a lot more than people think it does. That phrase, Abraham believed God, is a big and a powerful phrase. And when you have Bible faith, it means more than mental assent. Martin Luther didn't like it. Get rid of the book of James because James gives another look at faith. Romans 4 and on, Paul is speaking to Jews. These Jews believe that you were justified by circumcision. And you're justified by keeping the Sabbath day, uh, the physical 24-hour period. And you're justified by refraining from pork. And you're justified in all of the works of the law. And Paul had to go in there and teach them that we are justified by faith. And so he says uh, that, that we're not justified by works of the law. Sabbath day is not going to save anybody. A 24-hour period of time can't save anybody. It was a shadow, the Bible says, of things to come. Amen. Uh, and, and what he was teaching was, this is, thing is about the spirit. This is a spirit-driven administration. Amen. And, 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 and resting on Saturday doesn't make you more or less holy. It was a teaching that one day God would give you rest in your spirit Amen. It would be the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And it would be the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then it would be the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And there remaineth a rest for the people of God. It's a powerful and profound and deep subject. Amen. And if you think the Sabbath day will save you, you're, you're mistaken. Because the works of the law can't save us. You're not spiritually benefited by physical rest. Put it this way, if you are a liar on Friday and you rest on Saturday, on Sunday, you are a well-rested liar. <laughs> yes, ready for a fresh round of deceiving and conniving and... Amen. Because physical rest cannot spiritually change anybody. 
so you're not justified by works of the law. But if that same liar comes into the house of God and repents of his sins and gets baptized in Jesus' name and God fills him with the gift of the Holy Ghost, gives him a new heart, gives him a new mind, gives him, oh, somebody listen to me. He can take out that lying tongue and give you a praise and give you a worship. He'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life. And the Bible says you will find rest for your soul. Come unto me, ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So the superiority of the New Testament, Paul preached about it. And I could talk about all the other stuff too. And so, religion... Catholicism was very works heavy. And they felt that if you had some holy water, you could somehow atone for yourself. And if you paid enough money, they called it the sale of indulgences, that you could find forgiveness of sins. And if, and, and if you bowed down to idols, that you could find some kind of a spiritual benefit from that. Martin Luther, coming from that corruption, saw the works of men and said they're not of God. He was right. It's not of God. Thou shalt not make any graven image. No God beside God. We're not praying to Mary tonight. Because there's one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. <laughs> but as happens so often. In reacting against one influence. He pulled away from works. And in pulling away. He went too far. Have you ever seen a knee jerk reaction? Have you ever seen somebody pull away so strong that the pendulum swings too far to the other side? And what he said was, there is no work we need to do. We only have to have a mental confidence in God. And that's it. The problem is that's too far in the other direction. Because faith is more than mental confidence. There's a reason why it's called the book of Acts. It's not the book of thoughts. It's not the book of good intentions. It's not the book of confidence. It's not the book of mental activity. It is the action of the apostles. Hey, this is not a mental exercise alone but this thing makes its way to the outside and there's action there's there's doing there is purpose hallelujah man i'm glad i'm in a book of acts church tonight i'm glad i'm in an acts 238 church that knows that it's a little bit more than that repent be baptized Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's a lot more than just believing with a mental confidence. Amen. You can be seated. So James, James pipes up in the New Testament and he says, wait a minute, guys. Wait, 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 wait. He says, if a man says, he has faith and has not works. Here's the question. Can faith save him? Can, can unaccompanied belief save him? And then he gives an illustration. He said, you have faith? Great. That's awesome. Praise God. Devils believe too. You think you're the only one that can believe? I, I, I'll, I'll take it a step further. I think the devils have a little more belief than some people in this room right now. Devils don't need you to tell them how great God is. They were there. They had a front row seat. 
They saw his glory. They saw his majesty. They saw his power. They learned the hard way that there is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. This is why they looked at Jesus and they said, We know who thou art. Hey, you don't have to tell the devil God's great. The devil knows God's great. I got to preach to somebody and I got to get it into them tonight that you need to know God is great and he's greatly to be praised. I got to preach faith into somebody. I got to, I got to instill faith in somebody by the help of God. I want to give the word of faith to somebody tonight that God is able God is able. I don't care how bad it looks. God is able. I don't care how difficult your trial is. God is. God is. God is. He is able. Amen. You can be seated. I want to get the information across. I don't want to preach too long, but I want to get the idea out. James. James begins to talk and he uses controversial phrases. He says something that people don't like. He says that we are justified by works. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah. Seest thou how Abraham was justified by works? Yeah. And Martin Luther read that and his, his head almost popped off his shoulders. It can't be the scripture. I've got, a, I've got a pet doctrine. I've got something that I believe in. There's people that they believe that and they follow faiths and denominations. But I'm telling you, there's more to this thing. Amen. When somebody says, oh, I believed in God and I was saved. My reaction is, did you now? Because faith is more than saying a sinner's prayer. Faith is more than, con more than confessing Jesus. The Bible says that Abraham offered Isaac... Upon the altar and was justified by his works. Later on, it says that Rahab, she saved the spies and she was justified by her works. And when you begin to read it, it actually describes how faith operates. It says that faith wrought with his works. That word wrought means worked with, was accompanied by. It means, it means, it goes on to say that by works was faith made perfect. That word perfect doesn't mean without blemish or flawless. It means complete. What that means is mental confidence and mental Ascent and mental activity is only part of the equation. The other part of the equation is when you put it into action. And faith will work with your action. And by that action, faith will be made whole, complete, entire. It's not enough to say you love Jesus. You have to love Jesus. It's not enough to say that you believe in him. You have to walk it, live it, act it, do it. Ha, I, I, I want to get this across tonight because the next time somebody says, I believe in God, you, you got to know what they're talking about. You don't believe in God until faith and works come together. The Bible says that, that faith wrought with his works by works was faith made perfect. And then the scripture was fulfilled that Abraham believed God. Amen. Abraham didn't have confidence in his mind and, and then he believed God. But faith worked with his works. And then the scripture was fulfilled. You don't believe until you do. Faith isn't something that you just think. It's something you do. You say that you have faith. Show me your faith without your works. I will show you my faith by 
my works. It's not something you think. It's something you do. Oh, no. You say, I got to repent of my sins and I got to be baptized in Jesus' name. That's works. No, sir. That's not just works. That is my action accompanying my belief. That's real faith. Then the scripture is filled that you believe. When you repent, you don't do. Who does the work when you repent? You, 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 you have to come halfway. You got to say, God, I believe that you're able. God, I believe that you're just. And more importantly, I believe that you're merciful. I'm a low down dirty dog. I'm this, I'm that. And you dig into your past and you, you pull out all the rotten skeletons that are moldering in the closet and you bring it and you throw it on the altar. But when you do that, the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he, who? He is faithful and just to forgive us of all our unright. Who does the work there? That's not works of men. That's the work of God. God does the forgiving. He takes your sins and he throws them into the sea of forgetfulness. He, he washes them in his blood. He blots out the list of transgressions. He is faithful and just to forgive. Who forgives? God forgives. So who's doing the work? Oh. Oh, oh you, you're telling me i got to be baptized. That's works. No, sir. That is obedient faith. That's the doing. Oh, oh, man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. The Bible says that you are to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Not a few, not a couple, but be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you get in that water, it's your feet walking. It's your body moving. You are taking your faith and you're putting action with your faith. And faith wrought with his works. And by works was faith made perfect. And when you go down in that water in Jesus' name, God comes down and he washes away and he redeems Who washes away the sins? God washes away the sins. There's a supernatural work that is accomplished by the hand of Almighty God. Is this all right? Man, Man I'm getting warmed up now. About to strangle on this tie. Hey Amen. You can be seated. Now here's, I'm going to help somebody. I want to help somebody that's having trouble getting the Holy Ghost. You ever see somebody that's struggling to get the Holy Ghost? They come up here and they're, they're told that you're going to speak with other tongues and it scares them half to death. I'm going to what? You know who has a hard time getting the Holy Ghost? Smart people. Yeah. <laughs> There's some people, it's real easy for them to get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but here, here, you see where Jesus makes the statement, not many mighty, not many noble, right. not many wise. Right. But, but, but you have chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith. Uh, you've chosen the lowly and the meek because there's something about money, power, and education that tries to grab control and do the work. And, and, and you come up here and you want to put it under a microscope and you want to analyze it. And how's this Holy, Holy Ghost thing going to work? And, and how, how, how am I, how am I, how, when, where, what, where, how? And, and my religion said that and denomination said that. And pastor so-and-so and deacon no good told me this over here. And what am I? Yeah. And your head is filled with everything except the things of God. I actually believe that receiving the Holy Ghost is designed in such a way that you must humble yourself. He's chosen the base things of this world to confound the wise. Amen. Don't try to analyze the Holy Ghost. Just believe. That doesn't mean just have confidence and boom, it happens. It means you come up here believing that God is able to do what he said he would do. 
And, and, and people come up and they raise their hands and they've repented and the Holy Ghost comes on them. It's like a cloud that comes down on top of them. It's, it's all over them. And they're sitting there going, and they're, 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 they're vibrating with the power of God. And, 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 then, and then they don't have the faith and, and they, don't, they don't know that you have to continue to put works with your faith. Is an angel going to come down and wag my tongue for me? Am, am I going to be transported into some portal and some... <laughs> they tell me I'm supposed to speak in tongues, but that's the craziest thing I ever heard in my life. And the more you try to figure it out, the less you're going to get it. You have to believe and then do. I'm going to help you out. I had this guy. I, he, he would come to church. He was a real smart guy. And, and what is a benefit in the world is a liability oftentimes in the kingdom of God. Because you want to you keep control of things. And he would come up to the altar and he would pray. And the Holy Ghost would just absolutely, just absolutely overwhelm him. But he wouldn't speak in tongues. We'd spend two hours after, after church in prayer. And he would just sit there and shake under the power of God. And, and a month passed, six months passed, a year passed. And he got to this point. He said, I, I'm a reprobate. God won't give it to me. It would, it would just, it would just, hop, it would fall on everybody. Boom, boom, boom. And then it would hop right over him. Boom. And just keep on going. That's what he said to me. It just, it just hops right over me. I can't get the Holy Ghost. I looked at him. I said, you can get the Holy Ghost. You just won't put the action with your faith. So one night I said, all right, that's it. You're getting the Holy Ghost tonight. You've been at this altar 52 services out of the year. And you're trying to figure out, here's what we're going to do. When you come up here and the Holy Ghost moves upon you, open your mouth and speak whatever comes out. Let go of your English. Stop. Hey, listen to this. Have you ever noticed that the Bible says in, in the scripture when men prophesied and when men spoke under the unction of God, it says that God put his word in their mouth. Notice it doesn't say he put it in their mind. He said, I will put my words in your mouth and you will speak them to the man. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. The Bible says the word of faith is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Not in your mind. Stop running it through the dirty filter of your mind because you're never going to figure out the Holy Ghost. He puts it in your mouth. And brother, your job is to speak the word of faith. You open your mouth and with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people. And it's the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And it's the refreshing I said, you come on up. We're going to lay hands on you. Just come up and speak in tongues. He said, but how? I said, no how. Do. But where? All of that adult thinking is what's stopping you from getting the Holy Ghost. You come up, open your mouth, and whatever comes out, just speak it out. By, can you become like a two-year-old, like a child, except you become as one of these, except you be converted? You shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you come up and you speak. He walked up, raised his hands. The power of God was smoking through that sanctuary. And the power of God hit him like a lightning bolt. His body stiffened. His hands went up. Tears flooded. And I laid hands on him. I said, Paul, now receive ye the Holy Ghost. He opened his mouth and spoke in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. He spoke in tongues for an hour. And when he got done, he said, my goodness, if I knew it was that easy to get the Holy Ghost, I would have got the Holy Ghost the first night I came up here to this altar. Because it's not you that does the work, brother. It's God that does the work. You just got to put a little action with your faith. And faith wrought with his works. Come on. You speak. God fills. You speak in faith. God fills. God fills. God fills. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Whew. 
well, if, if all I have to do is speak, why don't I just speak right now and just speak gibberish? Because that would be you. Oh, but when the Holy Ghost moves on you, when you have repented of your sins and the power of God comes upon you like it did in the book of Acts, brother, that's not you. That's the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost has done his part. Now it's time to do your part. And just like you knelt at the altar in repentance, and just like you walked up into that baptismal tank, you yield your tongue and you speak in faith. And the scripture will be fulfilled that Abraham believed God. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall speak with new tongues. No, 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 no. I believed. I believed. See, look, I believed. And oh, there it is. I'm a son of God. <laughs> no. You must be born of the water and of the spirit to enter the kingdom. No, no, that's works. No, sir, that's not works. That's Bible belief. That's not 2016 denominal belief, but it is Bible belief. Jesus stood up on the great day of the feast and he said, he that believeth on me. As denomination has said, as Martin Luther has said, as religion has said, no, sir, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow, out of his belly shall flow rivers, rivers, rivers of living water. And you're going to talk in tongues and he's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I know you can feel that. I can feel that right now. Hey, glory to God. Faith is always tied to doing. Always. By faith, Abel offered. By faith, Noah built. By faith, Abraham went. By faith, Moses forsook. It's always connected to doing. You haven't believed until you've done. Show me your faith without your works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Stand with me tonight. Somebody lift your hands to heaven. Ha. You know what you're doing right now? You're putting the work into it. You're, you got to open your mouth. Don't sit there quiet. Don't sit there and meditate. Open your mouth and magnify God. Open your mouth and give God glory. Use your vocal cords. Use your lips. Use your hands. Lift up holy hands. It's the doing. It's the doing. It's the doing. And faith wrought. Faith wrought. Faith wrought. Abraham believed. Abraham believed. And the scripture was fulfilled. Ha. I know it's Wednesday night. I know the devil said you can't have a move of God on Wednesday night. But I want somebody. Come on. Step out. Come on down. Don't wait for God. Move your feet. God's already here. Show me your faith with your works. Show me your faith with your works. Come, come, lift your hands. Come, lift your... Vocalize your worship. Vocalize your worship. Speak it out. The word of faith is nigh thee. It's in thy mouth. The word of faith which we preach. Lift up your voice and speak to him. Jesus. 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 Do it. Do it. Do it. Don't just think it. Do it. Do it. Yield your tongue. Yield your tongue. Yield your tongue, Yield your tongue to the control of the Holy Ghost. Do it. 
Just do it, man. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. Ah, yes, yes, yes. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right now, right now, lift your voice, call on his name. speak it this is faith right here this is faith right here has said
next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings unto the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, Resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.